This Eagle. conference will now be recorded. Though your nest is set among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. If thieves came to you, if plunderers came by night, how you have been destroyed. Would they not steal only enough, enough for themselves? If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave gleanings? How Esau has been pillaged, his treasurers sought out, his treasurers sought out. All your allies have driven you to your border. Those at peace with you have deceived you. They have prevailed against you. Those who eat your bread have set a trap beneath you. You have no understanding. Will I not on that day, declares the Lord, destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of Mount Esau? And your mighty men shall be dismayed, O Tenon, O Temon, so that every man from Mount Esau will be cut off by slaughter. Because of the violence done to your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you and you shall be cut off forever. On the day that you stood aloof, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. But do not gloat over the day of your brother in the day of his misfortune. Do not rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their ruin. Do not boast in the day of distress. Do not enter the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Do not gloat over his disaster in the day of his calamity. Do not loot his wealth in the day of his calamity. Do not stand at the crossroads to cut off his fugitives. Do not hand over his survivors in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. For as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so all the nations shall drink continually. They shall drink and swallow and shall be as though they had never been. But in Mount Zion, there shall be those who escape and it shall be holy. And the house of Jacob shall possess their own possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau stubble. They shall burn them and consume them, and there shall be no survival for the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken. Those of, those of the Negeb shall possess Mount Esau, and those of Cephala shall possess the land of the Philistines. They shall possess the land of Ephraim and the land of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. The exiles of, his, of this host of the people of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath. And the exiles of Jerusalem who are in Sepharad shall possess the cities of the Negev. Survivor saviors shall go up to Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Sila. Amen. Thanks, Atoya. Right. Uh, so there we have it. The the vision of Obadiah, the oracle of Obadiah, this vision that he received from God. And just to recap a bit, we indicated that we know very little about this prophet uh, compared to other prophets. Some key like with Amos, we are told of Amos's life, his profession. You know, he was a gatherer of sycamore keys and he lived among the shepherds and so on. 
Um, we know quite a bit about Isaiah. We know quite a bit about Jeremiah. In the case of Obadiah, basically all, all that is given is his name, and we rely on other um, events in other prophetic books in particular, and to a lesser extent, the historical books, to place him, to date him. And so we indicated that he was a contemporary of Jeremiah, prophesying, ministering around the time of Jeremiah and during the reign of some of the kings who would have been reigning at the time of Jeremiah. He doesn't spend any time talking about himself. He doesn't focus on himself. He doesn't focus on his, na uh, his name and what it means. He just gets right into it. And there is, there, we saw that there is a sense of, of urgency, the, the weight of the message that he has to deliver. And his entire prof prophecy, the entire book, the entire chapter, is directed at the nation of Edom. We indicated also that Edom is used in the book, in the chapter, interchangeably with Esau. And that is because the people group that became known as the Edomites are the descendants of Esau. And I, I hope you recall that Esau, of course, is the brother of Jacob. And they are both the sons of uh, Esau and Jacob are the sons of anybody? Pop quiz. <laughs> Esau sons and Jacob. Go ahead. Sons of Isaac and Rebecca. The sons of Isaac and <coughs> sorry. The sons of Isaac and Rebecca. Isaac? Yeah. And Rebecca. Yes, right. And so they are they were they were brothers. And that is a very important uh point to note and re and remember because it will figure very much in the why of God's judgment against them and the the gravity of their acts of injustice, which is just where we stopped last time, and we're gonna get right back there in a moment. So Edom slash Esau in the book. And uh, the message that Obadiah has to deliver is one of uh, impending judgment. The judgment of God against Edom. There is a parallel text in, uh, in the book of Jeremiah which is almost identical. And then also the prophet Amos also speaks an article against Edom. In the case of Amos, he, he receives a vision for several nations. And yeah, you can check that out. I have a message for Assyria, a message for, um, for, for, for same Edom and a couple others. All right, so we said that it is clear from the book of, uh, speaking now about justice, it is very clear from the book that Obadiah, this prophet, has a great sense of God's passion for justice. And one writer, W. Elmsley, who I quote in, in the first chapter of Let's Major in the Minors, said, des describes it by saying that Obadiah has a passion for God's eternal justice. God's justice, which is eternal. God's justice, which transcends time. So there is no partiality with God's justice. There is no limit to God's justice. It's, it's eternal. And over there seems to be very passionate about that because of the, the way in which he presents his prophecy, his oracle towards Edom. And so we spent the majority of the time last time looking through the book to make this case. Where is the evidence or what in the book is the evidence to support this claim that 
Obadiah has a great passion for God's justice. And the takeaway that we want to make from this observation from the book is that we too, we like Obadiah, should be possessed with a passion for justice because justice is the heart of God. All right? Justice is the heart of God and God is passionate about justice. Therefore, we, his children, ought to be similarly passionate about justice. And it is, it is very clear. It is impossible to miss this when you are studying the, prof the, the prophetic books and the quote-unquote minor prophets in particular. Um, I, I really have a, a, a great issue with the, this, this nomenclature, minor prophets. I, I don't know who in, um, in church history made the decision to label them as minor prophets. I, I think it is a, 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 a great um, mistake because it, I believe, has contributed to the way in, re, in which those books are treated by many people in the body of Christ. There are, there are many, many in the body of Christ who simply avoid those, those, um, those chapters, those, those prophets. They will go to Isaiah, they go to Jeremiah, uh, but they almost totally ignore. And then, and then in the case of Obadiah, it is also made worse by the fact that not only is he considered to be a minor prophet, but, but again, unlike the other minor prophets, his prophecy is just one chapter. But the, the, the gravity, the weight, the government of the messages that are contained there are far from being minor. And top on that list is this sense of the importance that God places on justice. And we made the case starting with saying that the overall message of judgment against Edom in the chapter is evidence of God's passion for justice. The extent to which God describes through Obadiah the judgment that is against Edom, and oh, which we, we indicated that um, in the first instance, in the book of Numbers, Numbers 24, when the Israelites, Jacob, the, as the father of, of the nation of Israel, so Jacob is used to be representative of Israel. When they were on their sojourn towards the land of Canaan, they came to the land of the, the area, the land of the Edomites, and there was a road that passed through the land of the Edomites that was like, like a highway, you know, com compared to the, the terrain of other routes. It would have been the, the easiest route. And so they sent a message to the king of Edom seeking permission to pass through. And um, in between our sessions, I, I went to read again the, that account in Numbers 24. And the king said, no, I will not give you passage. The message that the Israelites sent to the king in that message, as if that was necessary. But they did. They, they, they reminded the king of Edom that they were blood relatives. And he said, no. And didn't just say no, but he said to them, if you come through, you are going to have to contend with my army. And then you know what he did? Just to make sure that they, they got his point, he lined up the army in full view of the Israelites. 
so that they would know, look, I, I'm serious. You are not passing through here. And so they were unable to pass. And then the other things that they did, which we're, we're going to, about to come to. So that was their action, one of their unjust actions, the actions of uh, um, an act of injustice. And God is about to judge them for this. And uh, we find this clearly stated in verse 1, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 16, and 18b. Um, they, they, as you can see there on your screen. Then we, we looked also that the, the fact that God pays attention to excessive evil, verse 5, using a double analogy that even thieves show some consideration. And uh, the grape pickers also show some consideration. They don't pick all the grapes. Here's a little aside on the matter of the grape pickers, verse 5. Um, so I want you to just, just zoom in on verse 5 in your text, that part about the grape pickers. And uh, let me see if one of you can make the link. Uh, what is the, let me see how, how should I put it? What is the biblic, what is the, what is the biblical principle at work here? Or what is the biblical principle behind grape pickers leaving behind some of the grapes? Uh, because in Hebrew, in the, in the Hebrew nation was taught that whenever they, they are reaping the harvest, they should not reap everything. They should leave for the widows and the orphans. Mm -hmm. So they should mm -hmm. reap everything. So that mm -hmm. when the, the gleaners come, those yes. orphans come, they can yes. get something to eat or to All survive. Right. Great, so, but, great. but that, their thing was too heavy. They were doing, Edom was doing too much. Right, right. Yeah, it was so pervasive that right. he was saying that it's worse than the grape pickers and the worse than some thieves. Because when thieves come to somebody's house, they not, they don't take everything. Mm -hmm. They may take a and the phone, but they leave bed and other things. So, right, right. Evil, yeah. evil should, should, should as a way. Should, should, we should know when to stop. Right, right, exactly. Thanks, excellent. And and again, um, in in Obadiah, remind making that statement about the grape pickers. It is it it is also a reminder to the Edomites because they too would have been familiar with that principle. Making the point, look how excessive you were. You went overboard, above and beyond. Um, and I describe that as overkill in, in the book. You know, they just, they just went, and I, I, I was reflecting on it again. What, what, what would have caused, what could have caused them to be, why were they so bitter against the Israelites? You know, we, 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 we will come, we'll come to that. Um, further on. Right. And then we went on to say that God pays attention to not only the excessiveness of evil, but also to acts of violence and um, God's attentiveness. We grappled a little bit with that because um, Latoya was, 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 was pointing out that the Bible makes it clear, the text here makes it clear that God pays attention. But in reality, in our lived experience, many times we find it appears to us, it seems to us that God is taking too long to intervene in the, oops, I'm sorry, to intervene in the, uh, situations where injustice is is um occurring sorry let me just get that back up i forgot that i have a touch screen <laughs> sorry i touched the thing and i brought it up all right there we go 
so but, but, but the text speaks to that the text brings out god's attentiveness all right so let's go back to this uh matter of god's attentiveness to to acts of violence starting at verse 10 and then we i i am breaking that attentiveness to the acts of violence that the Edomites committed and breaking it down into three headings of the violence that they committed starting with passive violence verse 11 someone read that first please. verse 11 On the day that you stood be verse eleven, on the yeah. day that you stood on a loaf, on the day that strangers carried off his re wealth, mm -hmm. and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. All right. Passive violence. Here at verse 11 god's indictment against edom is that they were passively violent against jacob why am i saying passive passive violence the the text says that you were like one of them on the day when they were invaded on the day when foreigners carried off their wealth you were like one of them. And why is God accusing them? Remember, God pays attention. Why is God accusing Esau, the Edomites, of being like one of them, like one of the invaders? Um, and and, and the, the, the Bible historians largely agree that the invasion that is being described here the, the this particular invasion of israel among the many the multiple invasions that israel suffered but this one here is referring to the babylonian inv invasion that occurred during the um around the time of daniel um when uh the invasion of by the babylonians that would have taken the wealth and daniel and the, and shadrach meshach and abednego among others would have been taken from jerusalem and brought to babylon so that particular invasion and you, you, you would recall i hope from daniel and um daniel in particular that the babylonians looted the temple and took out the the gold vessels that were to be used in worship and and among the, the, the loot that they carried out god is saying to esau to edom when that happened you stood aloof i am described i am i am equating that to what is called apathy apathy at the plight of someone who is suffering injustice so you are not yourself the one inflicting the injustice or the violence but you are present and you stand there with a mina business look on your face you stand there and you do nothing in the eyes of God, that is not on. God paid attention to that. So I'm describing this as passive violence. Last week, as we, we had just introduced that one, someone was, or, or no, I may be getting my forum <laughs> mixed up here, uh, could have been. Um, on an, another session I did last week on, on the matter of justice. But somebody was, was making the point that because of human propensity 
towards self-preservation. That, that is why many persons are moving away from, moving from over there, Isa, Jacob, back to us, back to us now, that it is self-preservation that could or, or often causes persons to take such a stance, that we see injustice, we observe injustice, but we, and we are there, but we, we do nothing. We stand by aloof. No, 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 that word aloof. It's, it's, it's an important word there. It's not just, it's not just standing there and doing nothing, but it is, it is standing there with a, a, an almost, well, not almost, I think, with a deliberate actionlessness. If I may coin a word. Um, so let's let's let me open it up, up a little bit here. Um, how would you respond to, to that observation? That it is perhaps because as human beings we are naturally inclined towards self-preservation, that that's why many persons in our time may take a similar stance as the Edomites did. Injustice is going on somebody is suffering violence and you stand there and do nothing or worse you do as the Edomites did you you stand there aloof and god is saying you were like one of them to to do that is to be just like one of them how will you respond to the observation that it may be self-preservation or, or perhaps um, you, you have another perspective. Anybody want to comment on that part? All right. So we're gonna we're gonna keep it moving. Passive violence, pos possessive violence, verse thirteen. Let me take that one. Possessive violence. Uh, you should not march through the gates of my people in the day of their disaster nor gloat over them in their calamity in their calamity in the day of their disaster nor seize their wealth in the day of their disaster possessive violence a violent possessing of that which belongs to another especially when that person is down injustice so i'm describing this one as possessive violence they marched through the gates of israel remember now they were not the invaders they saw the invasion they stood by aloof Oh, um, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just just reminded me, just reminded me. Bearing in mind the mighty army that they had, they had a formidable army. That same formidable army that the King of Edom had put on display to block the Israelites from passing through. Edom, Edomite territory. They stood by aloof, an invading army, a foreign army, a gentile army has come against Israel, their relatives, and they stood by aloof. Then, when Israel is down from this attack, they march into the gates of Israel and help themselves along with the Babylonians to Israel's wealth. 
let me let me prefer two examples um and i and one of them i used in in the book in the chapter that deals with this particular form of violence it is uh or it might have been under predatory but but okay so so let me use this particular example there is a motor vehicle accident and persons who arrive on the scene people are injured clearly injured and people who arrive on the scene proceed to help themselves to the cell phones and the wallets and the jewelry of the injured parties possessive violence taking that which belongs to someone else especially when the person is down wounded already in a bad situation and you come in and you take possession of that which belongs to the other person to 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 the the um, the person who is down can, can can anyone think of another example because what we want to do remember what does the text say what does it mean uh, what does its text say and, and and slash what did it mean then and then moving from that what is the text saying to us now today in our time All right so we always have to uh, cross cross that bridge so that's what that's what the edomites did they moved in after the the babylonian army entered israel and they helped themselves to their wealth and uh, even more importantly ask our let's ask ourselves what are the ways or are there any ways in which we or ways in which we may be guilty of possessive violence as we reflect on the word of god you know and and open our hearts to the spirit of god we, we may want to re reflect spend some time in reflection um at the end or, or sometime later uh, around this lord show me am i practicing any any kind of possessive violence right um okay so so passive violence possessive violence and then participatory violence verse 14. you should not wait at the crossroads to cut down their fugitives nor hand over their survivors in the day of their trouble <laughs> now now i have to tell you this one got me like like totally got me because i am i am envisaging the thing and i am I'm, I'm i'm playing this the, the the scene in my mind so not only were they passive, not only were they did they engage in possessive violence. Remember, I I, I said it earlier on. I, I've 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 been wrestling with why such dire, why such excessive violence against Jacob, and, and look at how it is play it plays out in the text they they could have come to their assistance against this invading army they chose not to they stood by aloof then they came in and possessed 
Israel's wealth. But, but it didn't stop there. They participated in the violence. Look at verse 14. You should not wait at the crossroads to cut down their fugitives, nor hand over their survivors in the day of their trouble. So Babylon, Babylonian soldiers invade the place. Naturally, flight. Israelites take to flight, trying to escape the Babylonian soldiers. And you are running for your life. You come to a crossroad and you see and recognize an Edomite. And you think to yourself, thank goodness, relative. My safe now. Help is here. And then you see a sword or a gun <laughs> in the hand of the, that Edomite person or those Edomite persons. And your joy is short lived. Your smile turns to shocked disbelief. You can't believe your eyes because you realize that your own family, <laughs> your own family, who you thought would help you against the person that was chasing you down is trying to kill you. And in fact, is killing you. That's what Edom did. They participated in the violence. So they waylaid them and killed some of them. And those that they did not kill, they brought them, they handed them over to the pursuing army. Now that's 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 some that's some special kind of 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 of, of cruel, if you ask me. And uh, the example that came immediately to my mind when I was first studying the chapter way back um, and this is way back in 2014. When I was when I first prepared, I was preparing messages from the book of Obadiah. You know what came to mind? The record. What we are told of the Maroons, and I'm choosing my words very carefully. What we are told of the Maroons, that the allegation is that having escaped from the plantations former 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 formerly enslaved persons from africa and taken to the hills of jamaica parishes of saint elizabeth saint anne and portland in particular and the british army the british soldiers always in pursuit of them and at some point due to the advantage that they had from elevated territory just as how edom had that advantage by virtue of them living on the, the heights of the land the british realized that they were suffering heavy casualties so the story goes and so a treaty was signed between the maroons and the british and as the story goes, part of that treaty required the Maroons to capture and return to the British any runaway slaves. So think about it. 
a slave runs away from a plantation, heads into the woods of Portland, and hears signs of hears and sees signs of life, recognizes a f familiar sets of faces, tall, strapping, thick, black man, and and thinks, oh wow, yeah, we're good now. Reinforcement. Only to be surprised by the Maroons capturing them, tying them up with ropes or whatever, and marching them right back to the gleeful waiting uh, swords and bayonets and, and muskets of the British soldiers. Treachery, absolute treachery, absolute treachery participatory violence they joined the invaders in hacking to death the israelites and all others they captured and returned to friendship. list out the unjust activities of the Edomites against the Israelites. As the events unfold and unfolded out of Minneapolis of the officers who were involved and implicated in the death of George Floyd. Three of them were actively engaged the one who had his knee on Floyd's neck. Two others had their feet on his back. And one other was standing there. The one who was standing there has since, through his lawyer, said that he was telling them to let him up from the ground because he's saying he can't breathe. No, I don't know. This may just be his attempt to get away by trying to put himself, paint himself as the good one. Time will tell. Passive violence, possessive violence, participatory violence. All right. Any any um any question, comment at this point before we look at the, the last one here, which is where the 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 script is flipped, which is where the 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 uh what's this week? Um uh, the crescendo, the crescendo is in the text. Any question or comment? Are you, are you there? Are you there at all? <laughs> Feels like I'm alone here. Anybody? I'm just in here. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, 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 the overall message of judgment, God paying attention to ex excessive violence, God paying attention to, to the acts of violence, the passive violence, the possessive violence, and the participatory violence of the Edomites. Um, but not only that, 
God's passion for justice is demonstrated in the book, finally, in God lifting up the victimized. So he pronounces judgment against Edom very clearly, and he indicates very clearly why Edom is being is going to be judged. So remember, for their refusal to let the Israelites pass through years earlier on, and now and and more recently, their violence against the Israelites. And uh, as it was prophesied through Obadiah, it came to pass in the exact form. God was very clear. Esau is going to be wiped out. There will be no trace left of Edom. And just as God prophesied through Obadiah, an invading army attacked Edom and Edom was obliterated to the extent that not long after, through the passage of time, the Edomites as a people group totally disappeared. And to this day, to this day, as we are now alive in 2020, the area, the landmass that that people group occupied has never been resettled. Never, just as God had indicated. Right? Um, so, again, as we said last week, it may seem as if God is taking long. 400 years, the Israelites were in, in bondage in Egypt. But God sent to Moses. 400 years of the transatlantic slave trade. But God sent a William Wilberforce and the others, the abolitionists, until the proclamation of emancipation. Justice with God, justice delayed is not justice denied. So he pays attention and he acts. In acting, not only from this text and others, not only does he deal with the ones who dished out injustice, but he also acts in the favor of the victimized. And, and again, this is a very consistent theme in the book of the, the books of the prophets. God standing, sitting, being on the side of with the victims and the victimized. So let's look at verses 17, verse 18a, the first part of verse 18, verse 20 and verse 21. as we wrap up. Seventeen, listen to this. Um, and, well, let me just, let me just, let me just take the last part of 16 to, to frame the, the transition. Or 
Yeah, let, let's, let's, let me take all of 16. Still speaking to Edom, verse 16. Just as you drank on my holy hill, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and drink and be as if they had never been disappeared <laughs> disappeared but on mount zion will be deliverance it will be holy and jacob will possess his inheritance 18 a Jacob will be a fire and Joseph a flame. Esau will be stubble. Still coming back at Esau. Look at the comparison. On Mount Zan, Edom and the other nations, they drank and drank. They had their fill. They, they were satiated. Oversatiated with their plunder. But in on the same month's end, in the very same place of attack and defeat, God intervenes to bring deliverance. But on Mount's end, there will be del deliverance. And what is what is what is the end result when God intervenes? Israel, who was the victim, is now described as a fire. Jacob will be a fire and Joseph a flame. Again, double. In Hebrew, in, in Hebrew language and Hebrew thought, dualism is a common feature. So they would repeat the, the same thought using different names for example or different plants or different places and it's really a tool of reinforcement so you have jacob and you have joseph of course jacob is father and joseph joseph is son but in this case both are representative of the people group the israelites jacob will be a fire joseph will be a flame fire and flame same thing but it's a it's it's a double usage for emphasis all right um and then verse 20 this company uh oh well and of course it continues using the um Ephraim and, and Benjamin, other sons of, of, of Israel, other sons of Jacob. Same point, just extending the point. Verse 20, this company of Israelite exiles who are in Canaan will possess the land as far as Zar Zarephath. The exiles from Jerusalem who are in Sepharad will possess the tongues of the Negev. Deliverers will go up on Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Esau. Hello? What a reversal. Previously, Esau, the Edomites, they lived on the heights. Remember? Early in the chapter, they said to themselves, who can ascend to the heights to bring us down? In the, in the pride of their hearts. We spoke about pride in the, in the very first session. Nobody can test me with big, bad, and heavy. <laughs> one of them, one of them uh, I do so myself, something like so. That, that was the attitude. But look at the reversal. And, and this is part of what we must always remember. The great reversal. In in Hannah's song, for example, 
which is very similar, similar, almost identical to uh, Mary's song in Luke chapter one, when she when she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. There is this same idea, the, the idea of a reversal. The same mountain territory that Esau ruled over, deliverers, verse 21, will go up on Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Esau. Why? How? How is that possible? Because God lifts up the victimized. He moves them from being beneath and being attacked and plundered and pillaged and possessed and preyed upon to ruling over the very the, ver the very place that had victimized them and and the kingdom will be the lords sounds familiar Th that ending that last phrase sounds familiar does it remind does it remind doesn't it remind you of, of the ending of jesus's model prayer but thine is the kingdom forever the kingdom will be the lord's that that Obadiah is reminding Edom and reminding Jacob, man in Israel, that God has the last word. That God has the final say. That evil, evil has an expiry date. And, and this is what should should encourage us to join in the fight and have this passion for justice because god can and god desires to work through us to bring about this end so that the victims can be lifted up because this is what he promised all right so i have uh, said and i have said <laughs> uh no open it up now so you can just um open your mics if you wish we we're gonna take um let's see we're gonna take 10 5 to 10 minutes before we close um we did start a little little be a little beyond um 8 30 and 9 30 has has just passed so then um open it i'll uh, you know open it up for any question or um comments i think i had a discussion question what i'm going to do and i'll probably just put it up so you can see it and re think about it so we can um have perhaps just use quite a bit of the time when next we meet around that this discussion question but um i'd like to hear from you uh, if if there are any questions or comments on what we have shared what i've shared so far Good night, everyone. Are you hearing me? Yes, loud and clear. That's Delhi. Um, yes, it is. All right, bless I, you. Go ahead. Yeah, I have been here and I'm listening. I have learned a lot and um, very, very interesting, informative as well. Um, mm -hmm. In this study, though, what what stands out to me is that. I have learned tonight that God pays attention. Not that I did not know. Yes, mm -hmm. I know 
But I'm reminded tonight that he God pays attention. And right. um interestingly is that I've also learned that we should not should not be like Edomites who stood alone. They 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 just stood there and um they did nothing. The first right. one, the passive passive violence. Yeah, yeah passive violence. Where they, you know, yeah. We just we should not as Christians stand aside and um do nothing when we see injustice. We should. We should whatever we can do in our power, we should do it. And you asked the question that um is it because persons would probably stand aside be passive because of self preservation? Yes, sometimes because of self preservation. And um also sometimes it uh it's because of not only self preservation but selfishness. Mm-hmm. So some persons are selfish and as long as it is not affecting them, it's not happening to them, then they just stand aside and watch injustice. Right, right, right. But as people of God, I've learned tonight that God pays attention. And if we see injustice and we can do something and we do nothing about it, then we are equally guilty. Right, exactly, exactly. Thanks, Sister Deli. Yeah. You were, on the day you stood aloof, you were as one of them. Yeah. You know, uh, that's, that's very, very sobering. That, yeah. that God is watching and that's how God sees it. If you do nothing, yeah. you're just as guilty. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Pastor Teddy? Yes, yes, Sister as I, as I listened and you said when you were preparing your messages, when I read this scripture at first, I was saying, um, you were saying messages from the one chapter. And uh, when I read it first, mm -hmm. I didn't see all the messages. I didn't see, you know, several messages. I, I, I didn't see so much coming out of these verses. But right. having listened to you, I have seen so many many things that we can glean from this chapter and uh, i'm happy how you commented and uh, look at the time in which it took place mm -hmm. and uh, why and how how god was looking intently at, at what these persons were doing and the different the three areas you mentioned mm -hmm. that was really it really stood out and um it is sad that relatives you know yeah could, could yeah. stand up and see yeah. so much injustice taking place to their own and even join to make them worse instead of improving their their, their yeah. lives the similar things we see happening in our world today and then this scripture is really fitting to what is happening right now yeah yeah definitely i mean you know it's it, it, it's it's one thing when a when a stranger does evil against you yeah but it it, it becomes so much more painful when the person who is it, it afflicting you is a relative yeah. Real, 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 really difficult to to grapple with. And 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 um, Pastor, God, um, Pastor God, Teddy, yeah. <laughs> I st I'm still grappling with why why is it that the Bible sanction slavery? Okay. I don't know I if it's sanctioned or it is silent, but. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't. I don't. I, I don't know if I should use the word sanction, uh -huh. but I was wondering why was it allowed? Yeah. Uh, although God told the people that they should free them after this sixth year, mm -hmm. um, is it that it, it was sanctioned, or well, I just, I just, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm just uncomfortable with 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 this slavery. 
bills yes, yes. and nothing was done. Seeming, seemingly sanctioned. That's, a, seemingly that's an excellent, right. yeah, that's an excellent question. And uh, the discomfort is shared by, by many, um, including and especially the, the agnostics and the atheists. I treat with that specific question in, in the book, in Less Major and the Minors, in uh, one of the chapters out of the book of Philemon, another one chapter book, this time in the New Testament, uh, where it is even more, uh, it, it is even more problematic because their Onesimus, the slave, runs away and the Apostle Paul, the whole book, the whole letter to, the, to Philemon, who was his master, is the Apostle Paul begging him to take him back. All right, so let me say, let me say it, the Bible is not silent on it, neither, nor is, does it sanction it. And uh, fundamentally, the answer lies in uh, language, use of language. So while the word slavery or slaves is definitely present in the scriptures, um, the kind of slavery that all our forefathers were victims of is absolutely not the kind of slavery that is mentioned in the Torah. In, um, the, in uh, between Genesis and Deuteronomy. So the same word in modern English, slavery, but a totally, two totally different concepts the, um, from, the, from the transatlantic slave trade and the slavery, keeping of slaves that was mentioned and uh, Seeming well, not not seemingly, and allowed in the Torah. So the closest thing to modern day slavery that is found in the Bible would be in the the four hundred year enslavement of the the Israelites in Egypt, and of course, God, the Bible did not sanction that because. Obviously, sorry, but obvious, obviously, God acted very strongly and miraculously to deliver the Israelites out of slavery and bondage in Egypt. So you're, you're just looking at that fact alone makes the point that it's two, it must be two different types of slavery. So why would God rescue the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and then later on allow them to keep slaves right so it's two different two different kinds two different concepts and unfortunately language becomes very problematic when uh given the fact that the same word can have variations of meaning which is why we always have to derive the meaning of the word from its context some people can't appreciate that and they say well slave a slave and so they say well the bible the bible condones slavery um again even over in philemon unfortunate as well because it it, it says slave but it is really an an employer yeah so, yeah that's what yeah. um rev that's yeah. what i was while you're explaining that's yes. what coming to me it's like is like when it, it uses it to 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 describe your position, like right. your 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 like a, your job, your working, your right, right, right. Like, right. I think it's a language I just said because mm -hmm. if in in Obadiah, God was so upset when you not even be the person who do the thing, but I mean you're not helping, you're not trying to. Right help in any way right. so god was really upset so whether it is passive or um what's the other one participatory 
a participatory, God was against all of them. So right. that means it's so that shows that he didn't sanction. Thanks mm -hmm. for the thanks for the clarity. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. And um a, a, a further further proof of this is in uh in one of the, the, the Torah, one of the, the, the books of the Torah, it makes mention of a person who has served their period of quote-unquote slavery, uh, the, the word as was used there, and they are now free to go, but chooses to stay with the, ma with the, the master because they were, treat uh, they were treated kindly and they became, they built a relationship. That person, that, like, that that is like like when jo, uh, Jacob went to Laban, and right. he worked for seven years. Yeah. So he, he wasn't in slavery, but he worked. Right. So he was yeah. free to go. He, he chose to stay chose because to he stay. saw something that he wanted. So he... <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for whatever the reason. You is like you serve out your you serve your contract. Um, and what used to happen really um, is that um, Pastor is saying something, Terry. You can sit on this. So no, sit on this. Go ahead, Pastor Mary. No, just mentioning about um the, the word bond servant is also mentioned. Right, exactly. That, that in, in fact that's where that's where that that term arises from. Your bond servant, yeah, a person who so you willingly um, bond yourself to to the to the service of another, um, to give up your labor for a period that, of time. That, that's when they carried it out by um they 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 use some form of um what did they do again? A they, they, to, and they, they they used to drive a nail somewhere. Yeah, yeah in the airlobe. Yeah. Right. Where, where, on to, to, yeah, he kind in of had to in the air room, like like where um where you'd wear an earring today. So yeah. they use a pointed a pointy a pointed up a sharp object and uh, you place the air lobe against like the door and right. uh, you you like you pierce the air lobe onto the, the, the door frame and that was the symbol of you saying I I freely choose I choose to remain with you and work for you okay yeah so 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 is that it where a person comes from <laughs> well that's that's what that's as far back as it goes <laughs> it goes it goes that far back and and in, in each culture it it um it had different different um it represented different things in each culture in some okay. cultures it, it, it denotes your, your clan and your tribe and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But, and, 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 and notice that um, that is the concept that the Apostle Paul uses to describe himself and to describe our relationship with, with Christ. Christ has freed us from slavery to sin, and we, in gratitude, we bond ourselves to Christ. We make ourselves... The slave of Christ. So we we, we are free, but we choose to make ourselves right. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So so yeah. So so in the, the, those who think, those who say that you know that Jesus never condemned slavery. Um, what was done to our forefathers? That was that was the, the, before that time. There was there was nothing as evil as that. Even even where armies would invade and they would capture uh, men and women and put them to work and so on. Um, there was nothing as inhumane. <coughs> sorry, that the world had seen up as as what was invent quote unquote invented. Um, when they when they went to uh, Africa and brought our forefathers um, to the West and enslaved them. 
So the Bible absolutely does not condone that kind of, that form of slavery. Or any kind of uh, modern slavery for that matter. All right, we want to uh, honor and respect our time. So um, let me thank all of us for, for joining us, for sharing. Um, we had a, a later than usual start this evening. We, 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 we normally were supposed to start at eight. Um, so next time we're gonna be starting at eight, God willing, and we, we will um, endeavor to send out the notice earlier to you so you can make your plans and preparations. But thank you so much for staying with us. God bless you. Um, want to use the opportunity again also to just remind us of the uh, new ministry that the Lord has raised up um, among us, Time Ministry. Check out our website, www.timeministry.org. And um, coming for up further ahead, um, in, in later in the summer, we are putting together a retreat, and uh, that will be very exciting. We will give you more details as time goes by, but just bear that in mind and help us to pray on that. Um, towards the end of August, last weekend in August, so you can start marking your calendar from now. And uh, that promises to be a wonderful time of refreshing. We've been through quite a stressful year so far, and we're looking forward to a time of just um, being together, being with each other, and um, being refreshed by the Lord and refreshed by each other's presence. That will be all there in St. Anne. But uh, more details will come. We'll get that out to you. Uh, but giving you a very early notice, mark your your, your calendar, set your diary from now, the last weekend in August, to spend some time with Time Ministry. Check out our website, check our Facebook page, so you, are, you will be kept abreast of our happenings. God bless you. Let, let, let me just pray with us as we close. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank for each person who joined with us this evening, Lord. And uh, thank for the lessons learned. May your spirit bring back to our memory and have your spirit move upon our hearts things that we may have missed and further that you want us to see about our lives as individuals in light of this message from your heart to your world through the prophet over there. A message which still speaks to you. Guard us, Lord, as we go to rest. Watch over us. 